The following program is sponsored by friends and partners of Jensen Franklin Media Ministries. Thank you for joining us today on Kingdom Connection. Now, I believe today what God is going to speak to you can bring healing to your body, salvation to your life, freedom to your soul. It can heal your mind. It can cause you to overcome. Listen to this and let God speak to you. I want you to open your Bibles with me. Go to the book of Matthew chapter 2. In Matthew chapter 2 in verse 16, Then Herod, when he saw that he was deceived by the wise men, were exceeding, was exceedingly angry. And he sent forth and put to death all the male children who were in Bethlehem in all its districts from two years old and under, according to the time which he had determined from the wise men. Then was fulfilled what was spoken by Jeremiah the prophet, saying, A voice was heard in Ramah, lamentation, weeping, and great mourning. Rachel, weeping for her children, refusing to be comforted because they are no more. Her children are gone and she's weeping. This is an amazing text in Matthew, the second chapter, because everything preceding and following immediately, it's, it's almost like it's inserted in the middle of a story it has nothing to do with. Matthew 2 is the story of the birth of Christ. And yet, right in the middle of it, all this joy, all these angels, all these appearing of messengers from heaven, proclaiming and singing on the hills of Bethlehem, a Savior is born. Right in the middle of that, it, it, it seems like that this text is out of place. It's not a new utterance, this Rachel weeping, it's not a new utterance. It's one that goes all the way back to the book of Genesis. Let me tell you the story behind it. Three times this is mentioned in the scripture. And, and, and I'm going to walk you through something. You'll understand where I'm going. But this is a message to families today. The story begins in Genesis 35, and there's a woman by the name of Rachel. She is married to Jacob. You remember the story. Her younger sister was given by the father to Jacob, and he married her, and now he's married Rachel, and Rachel was barren. She could not have children, and she was so grieved that she prayed an unbelievable prayer, desperate prayer, and she said, God, give me children let me have children or let me die. I am so desperate for children, I'd rather die if you're not going to give them to me. And God heard her cry and God gave her a miraculous child of promise, a child with enormous potential that would ultimately save the whole world during the worst famine this planet has ever seen. By the way, this is historical facts too. That there was a man that, or a boy, a child that was born that would become a great man. His name was Joseph. That was the first birth. Then some years later, as Joseph grew up to be a toddler, she gets pregnant again and she is in the ninth month of pregnancy and her husband, Jacob, decides to go to Bethlehem. And they're on the road to Bethlehem and along the journey, something tragic happens. She begins to go into labor on the road, riding a donkey, headed to Bethlehem. Five miles north of Jerusalem is a little town called R Ramah. And there, under a tree, she begins to have this child. Her sister 
is the midwife. She does everything she can for her, but something tragically goes wrong in the birthing. And the second child, Benjamin, is born and he's healthy. He would become the lineage of the kings of Israel, would come from the tribe of Benjamin. So these two children are incredibly full of potential. And something was wrong. And while she's holding one baby in her hands that is newborn and her little toddler, Joseph, is standing there and her husband, Jacob, she realizes I'm dying. And she begins to weep. She says, I will not see my children anymore. She's weeping, Rachel weeping for her children. And as she dies, brokenhearted, her husband and her sister and those little children are there and they have to pry her fingers off of her lifeless body. And little Joseph is taken away. And there the Bible said that Jacob buried her under a tree at Ramah. To this day in Israel, when you go to Israel, it is a holy landmark, Ramah, Rachel's tomb. It is a very prophetic place and very, very, very important to the Jewish people to this day. It was a place that represented when a mother was separated from her children. There was weeping, there was crying, the whole family was broken and divided. Death had come and separated and little children had went one direction and the mother has gone another direction and the whole family is grieving, it's division, it's separation, it's brokenness, it's brokenhearted. They're on the dusty road to Bethlehem. Nobody ever expected this family to be in this place at this time. And right there in that spot, birth and death intersected. The place where she was buried was called Ramah. Now I want you to fast forward to the year 586 BC. And there, Nebuchadnezzar, many years later, after Rachel has been buried in that very spot and she wept for her children and heaven heard her cry. Now you move and Nebuchadnezzar invades Israel from Babylon. He comes and he invades with his massive army and he decimates the nation and he destroys the city of Jerusalem and he kills many, but he had a secret service. This is all in the Bible in 2 Kings 24. And he said, I want you to get 10,000 young people as my prisoners to take back to Babylon to build my kingdom. I want the most talented. I want the most gifted young people, the children, the teenagers, the youth, the young, young people, those who are most physically fit, those who are wisest, those who are strongest, those who are full of potential, those who are gifted, those who obviously have something very, very brilliant about them, maybe in arts, maybe in music, maybe in some area uh, uh, that they can, I, I don't want their talents left here in the kingdom of God. Nebuchadnezzar had this spirit. I'm going to enslave them. I'm going to put chains on them. And he says this, I want 10,000 of them. Go get the children, go get the young people, go get the grandchildren of all these godly people in Jerusalem and chain them up. He said, I want you to go to Ramah and have a holding pen, much like the concentration camps during the Holocaust. You've got a holding pen where you hold them until we do whatever we want to do with them. Now I want you to see in the very place, and, and, and this now is where Jeremiah 31 kicks in. Jeremiah 31 is the second utterance of the same verse that we've been focusing on. And so I want you to see the picture. I want you to get in your mind the picture. I'm just going to tell it like I want to share it today, but I could see it as, as now the city is in 
shambles and the homes have been destroyed. Many have been murdered, killed, looted, everything you can imagine. But there are still some people who are very poor, the scripture said, and destitute. They go out five miles from the city and the rubble. And there behind the barbed wire fence, they see their children their sons, their daughters, that daughter that could sing so well, that son that was so brilliant, that other child that was so gifted, 10,000 of them being chained. If they resisted, they would be beat like the Nazi soldiers in, in, in World War II. Cruel, vicious. You know some of them resisted and they were beaten, chained, He gathered them 10,000 outside at a place called Ramah. And here's the parents realizing they're leaving. They're taking them captive back to Babylon and we can't go. My children, I could, can you hear a mother as she's weeping for her baby and the baby and the son or the child? Some of them were toddlers. Some of them were teenagers. Some of them were in their twenties or thirties and they're weeping. They realize I'll never see my mother, my father again. This is a day that changes our family forever. Division, separation, chains, bondage, being taken into Babylon. And suddenly, The Bible said in Jeremiah 31, something happens. Right in the middle of that, in Jeremiah 31 and 15, a voice was heard in Ramah. It's lamentation and bitter weeping. Rachel weeping for her children, refusing to be comforted because her children are no more. This eerie, piercing, weeping voice of Rachel is heard weeping for her children, for they are no more. I promise I'm going somewhere, so just stay with me. When I read that, and I I read that about those 10,000 children, the Lord spoke to my heart and said, that is exactly what Satan is doing in this generation. He is coming after teenagers. He is coming after children. He is coming into families and homes and separating and destroying and binding in chains of addiction, chains of alcoholism, drug addiction, chains of occult, chains of sexual immorality, chains of, of, of so-called freedom that is not freedom at all, and it leads only to a place of torment and brokenness and hopelessness. And he's coming. And Rachel, the mothers, are weeping, weeping. Families are weeping and crying. And it's such an amazing thing that it, both of those incidents happen at the same place. And then I want you to see one more. You have to fast forward five centuries from that moment. And one more time, the ghost of Rachel shows up on planet Earth. Her voice is heard weeping, and it's the story of Christmas. It's the story of the birth of Christ, and do you remember what happened in the middle of that? See, it's the same demon that came after the children in Nebuchadnezzar's day. It just possessed a man named Herod. And when the wise men show up, and they say, we follow the star, a king is being born. Then Herod becomes insanely jealous and he puts out a command that all of the children, male, two years of age and under, he says, kill them all. And you're not going to believe this, but your Bible said that they took all the little children, herded them up, male children, two years of age and under this insane Herod. History records that he was so insane, so jealous that he murdered his own sons. He murdered his own children, all of his relatives, all of them. He decimated his family. And now that spirit has turned on a whole generation of sons. And they 
the, it's called in scripture, the, the slaughter of the innocents. And guess where this horrible thing is taking place? In a spot five miles north of Jerusalem called Ramah. And as Herod is having the little two-year-old children, male children executed, parents, children, guards taking children from homes, you'd hear it in neighborhoods as they burst through the doors and take the two-year-old and under sons and take them to this holding pen. And parents and mothers weeping for their children for they are no more following their little children. The baby reaching for the pain, the sorrow of separation, of division, of hurt, of, 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 of a family being torn to pieces and seemingly no hope. And they get to this spot called Ramah. There a slaughter is taking place. And there are the parents again, generations later, weeping for their children. And they can't find comfort. This is horrible. We can't get out of this pain. Our family, we can't get out of this. Oh my God, this can't happen to us, our family. And right in the middle of it, the ghost of Rachel comes up again in the Christmas story. And he says it, quoting the prophet Jeremiah, a voice in Matthew 2 was heard. There it is in Ramah. Lamentation, weeping, Rachel weeping for her children, refusing to be comforted. It all happened on the dusty road to Bethlehem. Now I want you to see it. The Bible said Mary and Joseph were warned by God in a dream to get out of there and take their son who had so much potential named Jesus and hide him in Egypt. He's going to Egypt, take him by night. And so they go and they're hiding there. And Matthew Let's us know that Herod is trying to kill the children. And ladies and gentlemen, here's where I'm trying to get to. Satan is attempting to destroy an entire generation of young people in the hour in which we live. If you can't see that, if you can't understand that, if you don't know that he has come through this church and anyone, every church and every home that has endeavored and tried to raise a godly family and his demonic spirits have targeted our children, our children's children, they are under attack like never before. And it looks like he's picked up thousands. He's targeted 10,000 children. And Rachel has been weeping. And Matthew pins the same words, children separated, families torn apart, bondage, slavery, sin, addiction, depression, suicide. Those chains are all over this generation. Eating disorders, Vaping, smoking their life away, killing themselves, chained up, can't get free, can't get hope, can't get faith. They've lost it all and hell is laughing in the Nebuchadnezzar spirit. Says, I am going to have your children say goodbye. You'll never see them again. But I've come today not to depress you. I've come today to give you a word from the Lord. I've come today to tell you the hell secret service that has targeted our children and our children's children need to hear this. We are going to see our families come back to everything they've been raised in. And I want to give you scripture on it. Here's what happens in Jeremiah 31 and verse 16. He says this. See, it starts out with her weeping, but then comes this great prophetic promise in the last few verses of the chapter. Thus says the Lord, refrain your voice from weeping, Rachel. Parents, 
grandparents and your eyes from tears. Here it is. For your work will be rewarded, says the Lord. You know, that's what the devil whispers to parents and grandparents. It didn't work. All that taking them to church, all that getting them up and getting them ready, all that reading the Bible, all that praying for them before they got out of the car, all that laying on the hands, it didn't work. All that 21 days of fasting, it didn't work. It didn't work. Look at there. There they go. There they go. Hear the chains jingling? Look at there. Look at there. They, I got them. Drugs have got them. I got them. I got this in them. I got that. They're getting in that. They're getting around that crowd. They're doing this. They're doing that. I don't care what you think you've got. My Bible said... I don't care if you believe this or not, because this is what it's going to take to see miracles in your family. He said, our work shall be rewarded, says the Lord. Raise them up in the way they should go. They may go through hell. They may go through some crazy things, but when they are old, time's going to catch up with them. Grace is going to catch up with them. The goodness of God is going to catch up with them, and they're going to hit that pig pen, and they're going to turn around, and they're going to come to themselves, and they're going to say, I'm headed home. They shall come back from the land of the enemy. Everybody shout it. They shall come back from the land of the enemy. You got a kid in depression, say it. They shall, you got a kid in some kind of addiction, say it. They shall come back from the land of the enemy. Now that's what I believe. Watch this. Next verse. There is hope. All you who've been separated, all you who are going through hell in your family, all you who have an empty seat at the table, all of you who've been weeping and crying, there is hope in your future, says the Lord, that your children shall come back to their own border. I cannot stand your pitiful little golf clap. I'm not playing golf. I'm up here and I'm preaching the promise of God to your family and you better get a hold of it because psychology can't fix it. Doctors can't fix it. Counselors can't fix it. This is a job for Jesus. And when Jesus comes, the tempter's power is broken. Now shout if you believe it. They're coming back. I don't know how long, I don't know what they're going to look like, but they're coming back. I'm an atheist now. I'm trying Eastern religion now. Go ahead. Go ahead. You're coming back. There's too much blood on you. There's too much anointing on you. We're going to make hell pay. The devil's going to regret ever messing with any of our children. The devil's going to regret ever messing with any, touching any of our daughters. We're going to make hell pay. 